Yeah, what's up, dogs? This is Isaac here, and welcome back to Isaac Reviews 2021. So, last Friday, I watched Space Jam A New Legacy, and before it came out, I was mostly looking forward to it. With the first Space Jam, I'll admit that the concept is a bit out there, and the live action scenes are boring, but it does stay true to the spirit of the Looney Tunes characters, and the scenes where they actually play against the Monstars are fun to watch. And after 25 years, Warner Brothers has finally given us a follow-up with LeBron James headlining the film this time around. Anyways, I watched this in theaters when it came out on Friday, and on Sunday, I went on Discord and began a watch party with some of my friends. Mainly since one of them didn't want to watch it since he thought I ruined the first one, so I told him that if he does, I'd make this my PFP for two weeks. So there's your explanation as to why my PFP is how it is at the moment. Anyways, now that Space Jam A New Legacy has arrived, and now that I've seen it, I can give my thoughts to you on all of what I thought of it, and yeah. So, let's get started. Hang on a second, therefore, before we begin, I want to bring up something surrounding the film that became prominent before the first trailer even came out. That being the controversy surrounding Lola Bunny's redesign. Now, in the first Space Jam, Lola's design was a lot more, well, I think you get the idea. And a lot of people both then and now looked at it and were like, Ugh, that's hot. That's hot. But I guess Warner Brothers was a bit uneasy when it came to people simping for a cartoon character, so they decided to tone down the eye-catching aspects of her design a bit, mainly with how her melons are nowhere to be seen. And the fan outcry was pretty big on places like Twitter, with levels of simping I haven't seen since Dave from Total Drama. But instead of blatantly simping for a girl who's way out of your league and then trying to murder her for already dating someone else, these simps are a lot more tame and just complain about how a literal cartoon character doesn't have big boobies. But hey, it's Twitter, where just about everyone finds a reason to be upset about something. Anyways, for my take on the controversy, to any of the Lola simps out there who might be watching this, please turn off your monitor and go outside. Maybe touch some grass while you're at it. Okay, with that aside, we can finally begin. For, if you may... So, let's get started. Thank you, Four. Anyways, in this movie, it centers around a fictionalized version of basketball legend LeBron James, whose son Dom enters a digital world full of IPs owned by Warner Media called the Warner 3000 Serververse, and is soon under the control of its leader, Al G. Rhythm, who challenges LeBron to a basketball match to win his son back. LeBron then goes and gathers the, the Looney Tunes characters to help him in this game against some powered up virtual avatars of other well known basketball players who make up the Goon Squad so that they can save Dom or else the Looney Tunes characters will be killed and everyone watching their game will all be trapped inside the serververse. All the while Dom is manipulated by Al G to try and beat his dad due to him never truly understanding Dom's passion for game design. Quite some high stakes this time around. Anyways, when it comes to a new legacy, I should point out that this has a lot of Warner Bros. IPs in the serververse, including a lot of DC characters, Rick and Morty, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, The Matrix, Mad Max, King Kong, Austin Powers, The Monstars, and I'm just scratching the surface. And despite how critics aren't taking too kindly to this aspect, I didn't really mind it all that much seeing as how A, Warner Brothers has had crossovers with their characters in the past, and B, they were mostly just for one-off references and were usually over as soon as they began. However, since that aspect does relate to the writing, the film's biggest weakness also comes in the form of its script, mainly in how it shares a noticeable amount of similarities to its predecessor. Not only that, but most of the characters who aren't the Looney Tunes or Al G Rhythm are rather weak, with LeBron being a standard worrying dad, Dom being the standard kid who can't do what they aspire to do because of their worrying parents, and the Goon Squad being the typical bad guys that the villain, in this case Al G Rhythm, uses to do their dirty deeds dirt cheap, and the message on family and the importance of being yourself, while they do sort of help the film to have its heart in the right place if need be, the messages are still very tired and generic and make the film feel a lot more bland overall. However, those aspects are made up for with some of A New Legacy's other aspects. Mainly the execution of the writing, with the jokes being mostly solid and the big game against the Goon Squad being very fun and a visual delight. 
Speaking of visuals, with the animation, a good majority of the film is in traditional animation, which is pretty refreshing seeing as how it's extremely rare to get a fully or even mostly 2D animated film nowadays since CGI is usually the preferred medium. And even if there is 2D animation in a film, it's usually reserved for much more minor parts of it such as imagination sequences or for the ending credits. Anyways, the animation here is really great. The 2D scenes are nice, although the lip sync could be better. The CGI is fast paced and enjoyable, the effects are nice, and the environments for both the serververse and the Dawnball game and everything in between are fun and immersive. However, I do have one specific gripe regarding the visuals, and that somewhat relates to the first Space Jam. With the latter, Michael Jordan stayed live action for the entire film, while the tune stayed 2D animated in both their world and the live action world, making the visuals feel rather consistent. In this one, however, Michael Jordan becomes 2D animated once he enters the Looney Tunes world, and during the Dawnball game, he's turned live action while the tunes become CGI. Again, the animation still looks very nice, but that's just a small nitpick I have with it. Also, on the subject of good things in this film, the acting is pretty good with Don Cheadle delivering an excellent performance as Al G. Rhythm and the actors for the animated characters also giving solid performances. Even the only two big name celebrity actors for the animated characters, Zendaya and Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias, both do well in their respective roles. And the soundtracks are both great in their own ways and help amplify the film and the moods of a certain scene, with both the songs being enjoyable and the score from rookie composer Chris Bowers being fun to listen to. But anyways, in conclusion, for the overwhelmingly negative reception Space Jam A New Legacy is getting at the moment, I still have to admit that I enjoyed it. Sure, the writing was pretty clunky and the messages are boring, but the film stays true to the spirit of the characters, the animation is fantastic, and the music is a delight to listen to. Honestly, for my recommendation, it depends on how you felt about the first Space Jam. If you liked it, you'll probably have a better time with this one. If you didn't like it though, I don't recommend aiming your hopes up too high. Now, before my rating, let's hear what some of my friends slash fans had to say about this one. Luigi says, I liked it a lot. Bradley, the person I was referring to at the start of the video who didn't want to watch this movie, says, It wasn't very good, definitely inferior to the original. Naf Naf says, I didn't like it, but you might like it if you liked the first one. And Koizy says, It's one of the best animated films of the year so far. Warner Animation is still killing it despite that piece of crap that is Tom and Jerry. However, my opinion matters much more, so let's move on to my rating. Okay, now that that's out of the way, it's time for my rating. Alright, that was my review and rating for Space Jam A New Legacy. Let's try and keep it civil in the comments. Uh, join me next time when we review Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans. I've seen a bit of Troll Hunters, like, Tales of Arcadia and stuff. I've seen a bit of the show, and it's pretty interesting, so I'll, uh, I mean, I might be a little bit lost since this happens after Wizards, and I haven't seen that season yet, but, you know, the animation in this movie looks absolutely gorgeous, so, um, and I, I like the setup it has going for it, so, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to it, honestly. Hopefully, this could be DreamWorks' redemption arc. Hopefully. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode of Isaac Reviews 2021. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel. It helps out a lot. Uh, follow the links in the description for some of my other social media and my merch. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye!